In this video, I'm going to show you what I do with the throttle and the brakes for slow corners, medium pace corners, fast corners, and track riding. So first, we'll start with slow pace. So at an easier pace, I may not even have to use the brakes. Maybe just rolling off the throttle is enough to slow me down for my comfort for this type of corner. So as you can see, I put a piece of tape around the grip, a piece of tape on the plastic. This is 0% throttle, it's just totally forward. This is 100% throttle. When I twist the throttle all the way, there's 100% full throttle, just so you could visually see. So at a slow pace corner, say I'm going 50 miles per hour and the corner coming up is 40 miles per hour. Maybe just rolling off the throttle is enough to slow me down for my comfort to get into the corner. And I might not even have to go all the way to 0% throttle. It all depends on how much I need to slow down. So say I'm going right here, maybe 50% throttle, 60 miles per hour. Here comes the corner. It's only a 40 mile per hour corner, which is the speed that I am comfortable with. So maybe just rolling off the throttle slowly, get the bike to slow down to my comfort. I lean the bike into the corner, twist the throttle a little bit just to maintain my speed because if I don't do anything with the throttle, then I'm just gonna continue to slow down. So after I lean the bike over, I twist the throttle a tiny bit how much? Well, all depends on how much I need to maintain my speed. So I'm going 60 miles per hour, roll off the throttle a little bit until I'm comfortable with my speed, lean the bike into the corner. After I get done leaning, twist the throttle a little bit just to maintain my speed. And I hold it like that all the way until I could start to stand the bike up and then I could increase my throttle as the lean angle decreases. So check it out. Bike comes up right. Now I can start to increase the throttle. That's a low speed corner. Next, I'm gonna go over a medium pace corner. So I'm going a little bit faster now, right? So now I'm going 70 miles per hour and the corner coming up is a 40 mile per hour corner. So I'm going 70 miles per hour, but now probably only rolling off the throttle isn't enough to slow me down for my comfort. So I'm gonna go to the brakes. And keep in mind, when you only roll off the throttle, that's engine braking and it's uncontrollable. I don't know how much or how fast it slows me down. And if I want more control about how much I slow down, that's what the brakes are for. So let's say I'm going 70 miles per hour. As I roll, see my fingers? As I start to roll off the throttle, my fingers go up to the brake. Rolling off the throttle, rolling off the throttle, rolling off the throttle, 0% throttle. I start to squeeze the brake, get the bike to slow down to my comfort. And I probably go off the brakes. Once I'm at my right speed, zero throttle, I go off the brakes lean into the corner, twist the throttle a little bit just to maintain my speed. Once I could see the exit and take away lean angle, just like they say in champ school, as I start to take away lean angle, then I could roll back on the throttle. So rolling off the throttle, using the brakes a little bit, off the brakes, and then lean the bike in, that's perfectly fine. A lot of the times you don't have to trail brake through every damn corner. That's a big mistake people think. I advocate trail braking a lot, but it all depends on your pace. I have many videos where I ride around one-handed and I don't touch the brakes once and I'm going at a pretty good speed through the corners. It's a tool to use and learn how to do. It does not mean you need to use the tool every single turn. It all depends, right? Or even if you are going at a slower pace, who cares? You could always practice trail braking. It's just the degree at which you're practicing it. Maybe you just apply 1% brake pressure and as you tip into the corner, you trail off 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0.3. You're still trail braking. You're just going from 1% to 0%. So you could practice any pace you want to, but just because you could practice it doesn't mean it's necessary. Those are two vastly different things. All right, so let's go through the same medium pace corner now with a little bit of trail braking, right? So going 70 miles per hour, right? However much throttle needs to do that, whatever gear, right? And this is no shifting. I'm just staying in the same gear just to make it simple. So I'm going 70 miles per hour. I have a corner come up that's 40 miles per hour. So as I roll off the throttle, all the way to 0%, rolling off the throttle, I start to give a little bit of brake pressure. How much brake pressure do you need? It depends on how much you want to slow down. Brake pressure, brake pressure, brake pressure. Now watch my two fingers. I'm at 0% throttle. I'm still straight up and down. As I start to lean, see my fingers? I'm trailing off brake pressure as the motorcycle leans. Now, once I'm good, I got the bike leaned over to my comfort. My speed is good, right? And then I slowly twist the throttle a tiny bit just to maintain that speed. This is not acceleration. There's no brake right now. 
This is not acceleration. I just twist it a little bit just to maintain 40 miles per hour. And if it's a big, huge radius turn, I'm gonna be staying like this for a while. Until I could see the exit and take away the bike's lean angle, I'm just gonna stay just like this. Once the bike gets pointed the right direction, I can start to stand it up, now watch. So as I start to stand the bike up out of the corner, I roll back on the throttle. Now let's go over the same exact scenario, but now this right-handed turn that I'm going through, it's a blind turn on the twisties. So now I just keep the brake light on. You hear the click? When you hear that click on most bikes, that's when the brake light comes on, right? So I'll just hold the brake light on until I actually see the exit. Why is that important to do? For blind turns, you don't know what's around the corner. There could be a spun out car, there could be a tree branch, there could be a deer, there could be a crashed rider, there could be oil, there could be whatever else. If I'm already on the brakes a tiny little bit, the brake pads are already up against the rotors, my fingers are already there. When I see something that I don't wanna hit or some kind of hazard around this blind corner, I can instantaneously squeeze more brake pressure and get that damn bike to slow down so I have more time and space to figure out what I'm gonna do next. That's the benefit for it. Plus everything else, if you're loading the tire, the weight is forward, you're changing geometry, blah, 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 et cetera, right? So same corner, 70 miles per hour, now it's a blind turn, right? 70 miles per hour, I roll off the throttle, I get on the brakes a little bit, slow the bike down to 40 miles per hour. As I tip the bike in, I'm trailing off brake pressure. I twist the throttle a tiny bit just to maintain my speed. But my brake light, listen, my brake light is still on. Maybe, what is that, 1%? My brake light is on 1% until I see the exit. Once I can see the exit is clear and there's no car or trailer or car doing a U-turn in front of me, then I could trail off that last 1%, but I still can't do anything with the throttle until I get the bike facing in the right direction and I can start to stand it up. Once that happens, then I can start to take away lean angle as I increase the throttle. All right, now let's go over a faster turn. I'm going a whole lot faster pace, right? So now I'm going way quicker. Let's say I'm going 80 miles per hour and I'm slowing down to a 30 mile per hour corner, right? So I'm rolling off the throttle, 0%, I got on the brakes, now I'm using more brake pressure, slow the bike down, slow, 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 slow. As, say I'm braking 60% pressure right now on the front brake. As I tip the bike in, I trail off brake pressure, trail off, trail off, trail off, trail off, as I lean the motorcycle. Once I get the bike leaned over, I twist the throttle a tiny bit to maintain my speed. That's why it's called maintenance throttle or neutral throttle. Then once I see the exit and I can start to take away the lean angle of the bike, then I get back on the gas and go. The only thing different, since I'll mention it, since I'm, I'm sure you're asking right now or already typing, what about downshifting? Okay, let's say I'm in fourth gear and I want to downshift to third gear for the corner in addition to all this stuff. So this is what I'll do, right? Check it out. Going 80 miles per hour, roll off the throttle, 0% throttle, I get up on the brakes, I start to slow the bike down, I pull in the clutch, I downshift from fourth to third. Okay, and then I slowly ease out the clutch to allow the engine to feed the bike the next lower gear to get the bike to slow down in addition with the brakes. So I don't just let go of the clutch. As I pull in the clutch, I downshift, I ease out the clutch to get the bike to slow. And then as I tip the bike in, I trail. So the clutch is all the way out before I lean. Trail off brake pressure as you lean the bike into the corner. Twist the throttle a little bit after you lean the bike just to maintain your speed. Once I see the exit take away lean angle, I can start to roll back on the throttle. All right, now let's see what I'm doing for track riding. Now I'm going, and this is actually my track bike. Um, it's 2016 Honda CBR 300R. So now I'm on the track, this is what I'm doing. I'm on the straight, I'm absolutely 100% full throttle. Going, 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 here comes a corner coming up. Go to 0% throttle, I get on the brakes. Brake, 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 brake. I slow the bike down. As I tip it in, I trail off brake pressure. You see my hand? Look it. Watch again, I'll go slower. Brake, brake, 0% throttle. So I'm going 100% throttle. Ready? Here comes the corner. So roll off the throttle, 0% throttle. I get on the brakes, brake, get the bike to slow down. I tip the bike in, I trail off brake pressure. I start to twist the throttle a little bit to maintain my speed. I'm off the brakes completely. Once I can see the exit, start taking my leaning, back up to 100%. How fast can I get back to 100% throttle is my goal in life at the exit of every single corner on the track. Now a little bit different with the clutch. So let's say I have the clutch. Let's say I'm on this bike, I'm in fifth gear and I'm going down to fourth gear for the corner. This is track riding, right? 100% throttle, 
roll off the throttle 0%, get the brake to slow down, pull in the clutch, I downshift, and I actually trail clutch. Brake, 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 brake. I ease out the clutch a tiny little bit, not all the way, just to get the bike that helps to slow down, and, and I trail off the clutch to go fully out as I trail off the brake, both at the same time as I lean the bike into it, get the bike back to maintenance throttle after I lean the bike over, Clutch is completely gone. I'm back to the grip on my left hand as I start to take away lean angle. Get back to full throttle as early as I can. I can't get the full throttle while I'm still leaned over, right? I gotta be able to take away the lean angle as I increase the throttle. So hopefully with this demonstration, it makes a little bit more sense. And now you could kind of tell better, I hope, if you watch my other videos, like the best cornering video you'll ever watch or a lot of my twisty mountain road videos, this gives you a better example about what I'm doing with the throttle. Sometimes at a lower pace, maybe just rolling off the throttle is enough to slow me down. Maybe for the same pace, I just feel like practicing it, I could roll off the throttle and use a little bit of brake pressure. At a quicker pace, rolling off the throttle, a little bit of brake pressure, and now I'm trail braking. Lean the bike in, trail off brake pressure, right? Then I maintain the twist a little bit to maintain my speed. Once I see the exit and take away lean angle, I can start to increase my throttle as I decrease my lean angle. So it all depends. It all depends on what you're doing, what you feel like practicing, and what's necessary is not always the same thing of what you feel like practicing. One more quick thing about rev matching, blipping the throttle, rev matching. So I have a video about it. I have a couple videos about, I don't even do it anymore, not even on my track bike. Because after talking to a whole bunch of people like Danny Walker and Jake Gagne, who just won 17 out of the last 18 Motor America Superbike wins in a row, he won 17 races in a row, just broke the record, unbelievable. Cam Peterson and everybody else. So First, keep in mind, these guys on these bikes, the technology is amazing. They already have auto, they already have auto blip down and quick shifter up. But if they're on a normal bike, if you look at the race data off the race bikes that these guys have, right? Whenever people are trying to blip the throttle, like your fourth gear, and then you pull in the clutch and you rev the engine a little bit, and then you ease out the clutch to try to match the engine speed with the real, real speed. That's engine braking, right? Whenever you're doing that, and if you actually look at the data of the front brake, it's pulsating while you're trying to do this, right? So it's just making the bike take longer and you're upsetting the front suspension as you're going down. So I don't, I don't even rev match at all anymore. I don't care anything about it. So as I'm going, 100% throttle on the track, roll off the throttle to 0%, get on the brake, 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 brake. I pull in the clutch, I downshift. And then as I, I feed the bike engine braking to help with slowing down along with the brakes, so I feed the bike engine braking. And usually I'm trying to brake I'm trying to go as quickly as I can. So I'm brake, 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 brake. Then as I trail off the clutch to feed the bike the next lower gear, I'm also trailing off the brakes as I lean into the corner. So I'm literally doing both hands, trailing off brake pressure and trailing off the clutch. Then after I get the bike lean over, I twist the throttle a little bit to maintain my speed and then get back to full throttle as early and hard as I can, back to 100% once I could take away lean angle and I could see the exit. That's the whole idea. But doing all this stuff, look at the brake lever. No matter how good you think you are, there's gonna be pulsators in it, and I don't want the front end to be bouncing up and down. That's not very stable to me. That's just why a lot of bikes, they already have the technology of quick shifter up, auto blip down, so you don't have to worry about it. You don't even touch the clutch at all. You just kick it down and it does everything for you. But on this bike, it doesn't have any technology, no ABS, no track control, no nothing, and I do not rev match. I don't find it beneficial. I think it adds time, and it's too much stuff to think about upon corner entry, especially when you're going as fast as you can, like track riding. I think it's unnecessary. If you find it enjoyable and beneficial, go for it, but I just don't. And um, it, that's that's a preference thing. It's not needed. It's not 100% you have to learn how to do this. Learn how to do it, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes just play around and do it, it. But because of this pulsating action of the brake, and I paid more attention, once I talked to those guys and I learned that, I'm like, oh, interesting. I went out for a track day and I was still trying to rev match and do everything, then I did realize the front end is bump, bouncing up and down. It's taking me longer to stop because I can't keep that consistent brake pressure. I was like, well, how about I just brake, slow down, pull in the clutch, go down to the next gear, and I just slowly ease out the clutch. So by the time I ease out the clutch all the way, I'm already slowing down enough to where my engine speed does match the real, real speed. So I don't have to blip in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, hopefully that's not confusing. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. Hey everyone, real quick. For the slow and medium pace corners, uh, sometimes I use the rear brake as well. I'm demonstrating with the front just so you can visually see, but for the slow or medium pace corners, I might do everything the same as I demonstrated with the front, but with the rear. Still applying the brake, trailing off as I lean into the corner if that's what I wanna do, but I just demonstrated with the front just to, so you can visually see doing both at the same time. But once I go into fast pace corners or track riding, 
I'm not using the rear brake like that. Me, I'm not, um, for my preference, and because it doesn't have enough power. I'm braking so hard, I need to get the bike to slow down. The rear brake is not powerful enough to slow me down um, as quickly as I want it to do, and it doesn't load the front tire as much as what the front brake does. So for slower or medium pace corners, if I'm riding around, sometimes I use the rear brake only, all day long, out in the twisties, only with the rear brake. But once I start picking up the pace and going faster, if I'm on the track, it's mainly about the front. But I just demonstrated the front brake in the video just so you could visually see. So FYI. I also have another video all about the rear brake. When I use the rear brake, how I use the rear brake, everything else. So you could check that out as well. Just type in Moto Jitsu rear brake and the video will pop up.